Hi, everybody. So I'm really, really excited to be here to share with you uh, my first two days at Sundance 2018. This is my second year attending the Sundance Film Festival, and uh, I am t attending it a lot more films this year. Last year I bought a package of 10. This year I might see up to 20 films. So we will see. I, and it looks like I am going to uh, be seeing a lot of documentaries and a lot of animation, but I should get the, the animated films done this weekend. So that should be fun. And uh, so I've seen four films so far. I saw one film on Friday. I, I wanted to see two. But it turned out uh, that I went and saw um, uh, Would You Be My Neighbor on Friday. And it turned out it was like kind of the introductory uh, e event. And uh, hi. Um, and it was like the opening night gala. We didn't, I had no idea. And so it ended up being longer. And so it went into my second movie because like the governor spoke and it was this big deal. And um, <clears throat> so. Yeah, that was interesting. I was really annoyed at first because I actually had to pay $20 uh, and I had spent the big bucks on my um, pass. And so I was very annoyed that I had to pay an additional amount and wait in line. And, and nobody had said that this was like some exclusive event, but it ended up being a, a kind of a cool event. So it worked out okay. Um, so yeah, my first movie that I saw at Sundance was called Would You Be My Neighbor? And it was all about Fred Rogers. And it was a really sweet documentary about Fred Rogers, uh, about his life, about uh, his experience teaching to children and the way that he would talk to children, really listen to children, the way he really believed in children. You got to find out about all the different puppets and the behind the scenes story of the different, uh, all the different things on the set. And, you know, it sure seemed like he was actually the person that we all kind of thought he was. He really was that sort of sweet and that kind that kind and uh, I mean, nobody had any there was no controversy there's no like secret behind uh what you didn't really know about him you know kind of a thing and if anything one of his uh sons said that uh uh that he felt like it was hard sometimes having a dad who was like this the second coming of the messiah because <laughs> he was so great and uh and it was really fun you got to learn that like uh who the different um, puppets were based on. And that was fun. And that I guess he sort of saw himself as Daniel. And that was really sweet because Daniel was, you know, was really kind of timid and shy, but was a good listener. And, uh, and so that was, that was really sweet to see all the different work he did. There was a really cool se a segment where uh, he, they were going to take away funding from public television and public television had it only around a little while and it was 20 20 million dollars they're gonna take the funding away and he wasn't like a innate that famous of a guy at that point and he goes in front of congress and there's this really persnickety uppity kind of congressman and he gets up there and he says if anybody reads anything uh, just read statements i that's uh, i'm not going to take that anymore so Fred Rogers says, oh, well, I have a pretty good philosophical statement, but I'll just give that to you to read in your in your free time. And then he starts to talk about, about the way the children learn and the way that they listen and the way that that, uh, that 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 they need to feel that they are loved and they are valued. And that's something that that he can kind of provide. It was this really great little speech. And at the end of the speech, uh, the, the congressman says, well, I think that's wonderful. You, sir, have just earned your $20 million. And that was really cool. I didn't know that. So it was really neat. And <clears throat> so it was just, it's, it's kind of a documentary that I really like. It was very inspirational. It was very feel good. It made you feel hopeful. Uh, they didn't overdo it with the, like the current political connotations or um, try to preach to you at all. It was just like about a sweet man. It was very similar to the Big Bird, uh, to the man who plays Big Bird his documentary a couple of years ago. So if you've seen that, then you uh, would probably like this one. So uh, yeah, so that one was very good. I highly recommend it. Will you be, would you be my neighbor? Especially if you have any connection. I cried. I cried just hearing him talk, like talk about uh, how, how much he loved children and how, uh, and I don't know, it just brought back all kinds of memories and things. And oh, hi Ryan. 
Um, yeah, Sundance is super fun. Um, it's, uh, you know, I, I wish I was feeling better. That's the only downside uh, is I, I'm not feeling that great, but, um, so anyway, uh, let's talk about, so then, so that was the only one I saw on Friday night and, but it was really good. My favorite so far of the festival. And then, and last year, my favorite of the festival was also a documentary was step. So then we get to today. I saw three movies today. The first movie was one I was really excited for. It was called Lou Over the Wall. It was an animated film. This is the first anime film that they've gotten at Sundance, and which is kind of shocking and surprising that that's the case. And I was pretty excited that, you know, because I love animation. That's totally my thing. And so I thought that I would love it. The animation looked really cute. And it's by a man named Mas Mas Masakai Guasa, I guess. And so, unfortunately, I did not care for this movie. Uh, unfortunately, it is really cute as far as the animation, the character designs, other things. It's 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 really cute, um, but uh, it 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 was just the story was all over the place. Like I had, like I couldn't even focus on one central character. I really had no idea what was going on half the time. The animation. <coughs> <coughs> Even though the animation was cute, it was very like spastic, 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 spastic. And it honestly made me kind of nauseated after a while, like started to feel sort of sick. And I, I don't know, I just, I did not like it. I thought it was just confusing and kind of boring. And I I don't know, like, and, and the stuff that I liked was such a copy of Ponyo uh, that it, it really wasn't that special. I mean, it was very similar to Ponyo, but Ponyo is so much better. I mean, it's not like Ponyo is the greatest movie ever, but it is way better than this. And and uh, I don't know. I just, I was pretty disappointed by it. And I just was like, oh, shoot. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't even stay for the Q&A because I was just like, I just didn't like this movie. So it's definitely the miss so far from Sundance for sure. So that was a bummer. <laughs> Especially, like I said, because it's the first anime film, and I love to champion indies and anime. So then the second film that I saw was uh, uh, a doc another documentary, and this was called The Science Fair, and this was about the International Science Fair that I guess they have at LA, in L.A. It's kind of funny because there's actually two documentaries this year on the this International Science Fair, which is random. I'm going to see both. And this one was was really good. The, the the there's one teacher in particular in New York that ended up getting nine students of her students to the science fair, and she was pretty amazing. She was really inspiring. I, I my only flaw with the movie is I felt like they they could have focused on maybe two less people and two less of the students and made it a little tighter. It felt a little over long to me. It was a little. I, I felt I started to lose interest. In different segments but it was still like it was still really entertaining and they definitely got like a really diverse eclectic group and there some of them i would have almost like to see a whole movie about there was a i mean it's kind of amazing some of the people that uh, what they're able to come up with just as high school students there was uh, a a duo from origin uh from brazil i think or argentina i can't remember Anyway, that came up with this uh, treatment for this uh, treatment for the Zika um, virus, which I thought was pretty amazing for just like high school students. And uh, I know they saw a pretty interesting different um, projects that they were working on. So it was a lot. It was good. It was it was just a little over long, but it was still inspiring and good. It's kind of documentary that I like uh, in profiling real people uh, that, uh, that are making a difference. And so that was good. And then the final movie that I saw um, was the animation Spotlight. And this uh, I saw last year. And so these are all the shorts. And I wasn't really that impressed last year. Last year, I felt like everybody was trying to copy Don Hertzfeld. And there's only one Don Hertzfeld. 
And if you haven't heard of Don Hertzfeld, he wrote a uh, he wrote and directed The World of Tomorrow, which is very surreal and abstract. And I just feel like everybody was trying to be really surreal and abstract. And you can only take that for so long. And so, um, so this year, uh, I I think it was better, but that's only because uh, a lot of them I didn't love. But uh, I'll kind of go over them. So there's. So there's these are shorts. There's one called Monavald, and this is about a wolf who, uh, I mean, it's about a fox who ends up getting this kind of sort of like a wolf stripper kind of. I don't know. I didn't really like it that much. Um, and then there's one called O um, that I, um, I don't know. I honestly got, it. it was about like, it was just like a world, it's kind of like a world based on like sound and movement. And it was, this one was kind of very Don Hertzfeldy. Um, I, I didn't love it. It was sort of boring. Um, and then we have Brief Spark Bookend by Darkness. And again, another Don Hertzfeldy-ish kind of one. I don't even remember it, honestly. Plural. And this is, uh, this was a, a claymation uh, about these voicemails that this person got about not being with uh, her man. I don't know. I didn't really like it. Um, then there's glucose. And this was uh, basically like a video is set in a video game world. And when the guy spoke after so it had all of this like social connotations and stuff. And I didn't get that. Didn't pick that up. I actually kind of fell asleep in this one, but I was pretty tired. Um, then one called eye bags and uh, this is about chronic insomnia, <laughs> and that one I, I liked quite a bit. It was pretty good, maybe because I relate to it because I have chronic insomnia. <clears throat> okay, then, um, then the driver is red. This was one of the highlights. It was really good. It was done using like a sketchy style, and it was all about these Israeli secret serv secret service agents who went down to Argentina to uh to do this sort of coup and to uh, abduct this uh man who was one of the heads of the third reich uh that had never been tried after world war ii and uh, it was pretty exciting and pretty intense and emotional and and um it was well done that was one of the best ones for sure and it was pretty long um and then geome and uh, this was a short one about uh, the, the, this father and son having this large birthmark on their butts. I don't know. It was, I didn't really like it. Um, and then the last one is called The Burden. And this was definitely the highlight for sure. This was so good. It was, a, it's a stop motion um, musical, actually, about these um, various, uh, it starts out with this like fish hotel for singles and these fish singing. And then you have these mice that were dancing and tap dancing. And then you have, um, oh gosh, what was the others? Uh, then you have monkeys that are at a call center. And it was just totally random, but it was really funny. And I thought the songs were really good. And I really liked that one a lot. It was worth it for the, all the boring ones. So basically the animation spotlight, I think had three that I liked out of all of those. Um, but I liked them a lot enough to be happy, happy with it. So there you go. So that's the four films I've seen so far. My favorite is still the, um, my favorite is still the, would you be my neighbor? And the worst one is that Lou over the wall. I really didn't care for it. So that's it. And now tomorrow, just so you guys know, and I'll do another live stream tomorrow. Um, so I have, I am seeing tomorrow. Um, I am seeing, the, uh, there's a Robin Williams documentary that I'm seeing. I'm seeing a movie called On Her Shoulders. Um, and, uh, and then uh, a movie called, I'm seeing the last of the animated films called White Fang. And I'm really excited about that based on the Jack London uh, film. I mean, book, novel, classic novel. And then I'm seeing a movie called The Eighth Grade. And let me get those descriptions real quick. Okay. 
So, um, so yeah, White Fang. On her shoulders is that it's um, a 23-year-old Nadia Murad. This is another documentary uh, that it's um, it's a vital crusade to find the most influential platforms in the world and speak out on behalf of the embattled Yazidi community who face mass extermination by ISIS militants. So that sounds pretty intense. Um, so that'll be interesting for sure. So I've seen that. Rom Williams, it's called Rom Williams Come Inside My Mind. And then, yeah, White Fang, based on the Jack London classic novel. It looks really good. And then the eighth grade, um, which is, uh, it is a dramatic film about a girl who uh, who is hoping to find connections online that might make up for, though she's unable to forge an everyday life, she makes YouTube videos aimed at other adolescents dealing with similar issues. But after so easily summoning this wisdom and confidence when addressing her audience, Kyla finds it paralyzing, difficult to apply in real situations. So that certainly seemed like something that I could relate to. It seemed like it would be good. So hopefully it'll be good. And so that's on the docket for tomorrow for Sundance. So there you go. I'll let you know how it all turns out. And uh, we will be going. I'm not going to see anything on Monday. Uh, there was just nothing that really interests me. And I had to some podcasting and stuff I, had to, I have to do. And then on Tuesday is my birthday. And I have a bunch of things scheduled for Tuesday going all the way into the rest of the week. So. Um, that is uh, everything that happened in the first two days of Sundance. Let me know what you think, and uh, and thanks so much. Please uh, look for more videos, more live streams, and uh, and if any of you out there are going to Sundance, let me know what you've seen and what you liked and didn't like. It's always sort of a mixed bag. Last year it was like 50-50 movies I liked, movies I didn't like. And uh, so, yeah, that's part of the fun of it, I think, really. So uh, take care, and I'll talk to you all later.